Welcome to Dire Headlines. I'm Anthony Carlyle. Thank you for joining us. Coming up in the show today, as you volunteers in American Samoa hand aid to struggling families who were hit by the 2009 tsunami. There are more than one way to cut your carbon footprint, as we find out from Frugal City volunteer Zhang Zhongming in Taiwan. And in our continuing series on the traditional trades of Taiwan, we meet the sesame seed farmers who market their own oil, biscuits and other sesame-made products. In September 2009, an earthquake measuring 8.0 on the Richter scale created a six-meter tsunami that struck the Samoan islands in the South Pacific. Coastal villages were flattened and over 100 people were killed. More than two years later, although many families have moved away, others are still living in damaged houses or tents. Tsuji volunteers from the United States travel to American Samoa to hand out aid to the victims. There's a family right here that still hasn't rebuilt by, uh, it was damaged by the tsunami. In this community, 15 families moved to higher ground after the tsunami, afraid to live closer to the shore. But many people still live in tents along the coast, determined to overcome hardship without leaving their home. The tsunami made landfall right here in 2009. Such a peaceful coast. It's hard to imagine just over two years ago. High ferocious waves reaching six meters prompted 16 countries in the South Pacific region to issue emergency tsunami warning. In American Samoa, over 100 were killed. Tsuji volunteers from the United States are here once again. Residents say the local water is undrinkable, so they have to rely on imported drinking water. Naming food is bananas. Along with human warmth, volunteers bring easy to cook and tasty instant rice. A forest was planted on the coast as a wind break, and some businesses have resumed. But there is still garbage scattered everywhere. Volunteers use the opportunity to tell residents wearing sarongs that PED bottles can be recycled to make sarongs and teach them the importance of environmental conservation. Buddha Day is coming up next month. As in past years, Tsuji will perform a ceremony at the Chiang Kai-shek Memorial Hall in Taipei. This year, the participants include 26 actors from Tsuji's Performers Association. Like other volunteers, they also went to the rehearsals for the big day. After participating in the water repentance, several Taiwan's actors joined Tsuji and went a step further by forming a performance association to contribute to public welfare. Now they are on a team rehearsing for this year's Buddha bathing ceremony. Last year I was unable to participate in the ceremony, so I really didn't want to miss it this year. This is a very special opportunity, and this year we have many people from the Performers Association taking part. We are like classmates. Everyone is working together. It's a very special feeling. There is one part called the Dharma boat where we look at the sky. When you look at the sky, you feel very small. It makes you shrink your ego. Whether for the water repentance or the Buddha bathing ceremony, participants are not paid for this performance. Yet for them, it is a very meaningful role to play. For me, this is a big test. I have to learn how to expand effort unconditionally. The actors feel more united for this event. This is the first time they have devoted effort to the Buddha bathing ceremony rehearsal with common intention and perfect interaction. Volunteers use the Tsuji Suangke branch in New Taipei City as a space to practice the positions they will take at the Memorial Hall.
Even though there is nothing on the table, everybody is focused on rehearsing. Zhuang Zixian has performed for many years, but this time she has taken on contributor duties. Before, I felt it was very simple, but suddenly now, I feel there is a lot to organize, even though I'm still young and should be clear-headed. By changing positions, I have to pay even more attention. They go through the dress rehearsal as if it were the real performance. This year, a total of 1,564 volunteers and residents are invited to participate in the ceremony in a bid to enable the meaning and benefits of the Dharma boat to last beyond the event. City's headquarters in the United States recently invited grade three students from local X Strand Elementary School to come and learn about environmental protection. Through the visit, the students discovered the importance of conservation. Despite the wet, windy weather, Tsuji volunteers smile warmly to welcome 150 students from a local school. In class, the students raise their hands to answer questions. Through activities, they learn about the importance of recycling. Find a number here. Oh. Right. This one, it's a newspaper. I didn't see that. Yeah. It's been a great experience for the students. They don't often get to have hands-on experiences about recycling, so this has been a great opportunity for them. In another class, the students quietly watch a video about water resources. Now the students understand that if they don't cherish the water, one day it will run out. What kind of water is this? Dirty, muddy water. After watching the video, the students understand the importance of cherishing our water resources. How can you reduce the use of water when taking a shower? You can take a shower in the shower. And when you're washing your body, you could turn it off, and then when you need to rinse it off, you turn it back on. The class is designed to raise awareness among students, so during their daily routines, such as brushing their teeth, the students can remember to cherish their water. As global warming has been an important issue, the Tsuji volunteers know the children's education on environmental protection cannot wait. Through today's class, the volunteers hope to raise awareness among the students. In Taiwan, Master Zheng Yin is calling on her followers to eat 80% full this year and save the rest to help the poor. In our next story today, we meet Tsuji volunteer Zhang Zhongming from the Fengyuan district of Taichung, who was inspired by the Master's call. City volunteer Zhang Zhongming cycles four kilometers from his house to the train station instead of using his motorbike, saving him four dollars in fuel cost. And if Zhang takes the 20 kilometer train ride from Fengyuan to Taizong, it will save him another four dollars. We can buy return tickets when taking the train, and we save $4. If we buy a top-up card, we get other discounts as well. Next, Zhang saves even more when he takes the bus to the city chapter. Bus trips of less than 8 kilometers are free. From the train station to Tsuji chapter, the return ticket costs $40, which I can save and donate to my bamboo coin bank for carbon reduction. Going to Taizong Tsuji chapter, Zhang Zhongming saves a total of 48 NT dollars. Shishong, 
还有很多好处。对呀、啊，可以达到健身的目的，还有可以节能减碳。师姐好像还解决很多困扰。对呀、啊，没有停车的问题哦。Eating only 80% full and leaving the remaining 20 to those in need. The volunteer has many plans for saving water and electricity. There's natural lighting in my room, so when I take a shower, I leave the door open and don't turn on the light. My family works together to save water and electricity. I put the kindness coin bank in my place of worship and hope that apart from worshipping the Buddha, I will also think a good thought each day. I want to dedicate that good merit to my parents and cultivate wisdom and blessings. Originally, Zhang Zongming donated $10 to his coin bank every day, inspired by the master's teachings. However, he decided to add a few more coin banks to his collection. Through donating to the Discipline and Positive Thoughts coin banks, he also got rid of his bad habits. I ordered many different magazines, but I hardly ever read them. I only ordered them because of the free gifts. I told myself that if I couldn't control myself and bought things that I desired, I would have to donate double the price to the coin bank. On every coin bank is a Jinsu aphorism, reminding Zhang Zongming to create blessings and cultivate wisdom. The volunteer also seizes every opportunity to promote Tzu's philosophy to those around him. When you live a simple life, you also live a better life. There are only two kinds of butterfly that migrate, and one is Taiwan's very own purple crow. From today, we'll bring you a special series of features on this rare butterfly. We start by introducing you to Maolin Purple Butterfly Valley researcher, Jian Jialong. It was because when I was small, my aunt gave me a book on butterflies, which helped me develop my passion for the insect. Of course, had my aunt given me a book on Warren Buffett, perhaps I would be a big-time investor now. Wouldn't that be wonderful? She just gave me the wrong book. Perhaps Zhang Jialong's aunt did not make a mistake after all, for it was thanks to the conservationist's hard work that the mystery surrounding the migratory purple crow butterfly of Taiwan has been unraveled and boosted the country's reputation. Taiwan's tropical island climate has helped ten times as many purple butterflies to thrive here as in any other part of the world. The purple crow butterfly can be found in Asia, from India all the way to northern Australia. The butterfly valley in Maolin, southern Taiwan, is where the species like to gather in winter. There are four subfamilies. On the underside of the eastern bronze four wings is a white spot. Also, on both the top and underside of the blue banded king's four wings is a white spot. The double branded black crow has three white spots on the underside of its four wings, while the striped blue has many small white spots on both sides of its four wings. What they all have in common, though, is that their wings give off a purplish hue as the angle of the light source changes. Though we call them purple butterflies, they are more commonly known as purple crow butterfly, crow like the bird, black crow. In tropical areas, purple butterflies are actually black in color, hence the name purple crow butterflies, because they are mostly black in color. The butterfly's unique color drew Zhang Jialong, who graduated from National Taiwan University's Entomology Institute, to study the migratory species. After years of research and tracking, Zhang discovered the butterflies are quite smart and remember the quickest and easiest route when they migrate. <laughs> Where the plains and the mountains intersect, if you follow along this edge, you won't get lost. This is called flying along the boundary. As the weather in Taiwan warms up in March, the butterflies migrate from south to north, taking two routes. One along the island's east coast, as it gets hotter, the butterflies move up Taiwan's mountains for cover. And in September, they fly back to Maoling once again. 
after sharing his discovery on the butterflies. Zhan Jialong carefully places his sample specimen back in storage. Zhan's passion for the butterfly helped him become a conservationist, and his discovery helped the world get to know Taiwan and its migratory butterfly. Sesame seed oil is an essential ingredient in Chinese cooking. A third of Taiwan's sesame is grown in Tainan's Xigang. As we find out in today's episode on the traditional trades of Taiwan, the local farmers association has taken over the supply chain and makes its own sesame seed oil. One day halfway through class, the teacher suddenly told us to grow sesame. I was happy because we didn't have to stay in class. In September 2007, two dozen children at Songling Elementary School in Tainan rolled up their sleeves and headed to the fields to grow sesame. Three or four months and three typhoons later, they finished their task. The film they made showed why their hometown of Xigang is Taiwan's sesame capital. Sesame is our Xigang's main product and makes up one-third of the whole of Taiwan because Taiwan has about 1,200 hectares and our Xigang makes up three to four hundred hectares. Xigang Farmers Association established the marketing group in 2005 and started buying directly from the farmers to make their own sesame oil, sesame biscuits and other products, which they sell directly on the market. By taking over the supply chain, the association increased the value of locally grown sesame. However, some things are still beyond their control. For the first harvest, the cold is a worry, and the second harvest is in rainy season, which is a worry because it must be sun-dried. When we plant the second crop, we worry when the sesame is half-grown, a typhoon will wipe it all out. Our plan was to film the first harvest of sesame, but the hot and cold weather this spring slowed down its growth. This year, when we planted the first crop, the temperature dropped. The seeds died in the cold and couldn't grow. When there's a big temperature difference, it dies very easily. Filming inside the sesame seed factory instead, the first step starts with cooking the seeds. This time the temperature of the stove is crucial to making good oil. The temperature is about 230 or 223, around 200 degrees. This is 250. It's around 223. If it gets too hot, the sesame will taste burned. If it's not hot enough, the sesame won't be properly cooked and won't have enough flavor. From harvesting to cooking the sesame at a high temperature and then cooling, crushing, steaming and finally putting the mixture in a press, although some of the six steps have been mechanized, a human touch is still needed. Each step needs more than mechanization. Moving around and operating the controls must be done by hand for the sake of the product. The whole production line from supplying seeds to our product marketing group to jointly running the business and the whole farming process, we promote strict controls between the investors and farmers. The coordinator of Xigang Farmers Association says each bottle of sesame seed oil takes 400,000 seeds to make. Every seed represents the blood, sweat and tears of the farmers and strict quality controls in the factory help make each drop of the famous Xigang sesame seed oil. Apart from Xigang, another famous place for sesame seed oil is Da Shu in Kaohsiung, where you'll find a 103-year-old factory run by Mr. and Mrs. Cho. The couple still make sesame oil the traditional way, over a wood-fired stove. 
A huge mixer churns around and around, and waft after waft of good smells drift through the factory. This sesame seed oil shop, which still uses a traditional wood-fired stove, has been in Kaohsiung's Da Shu for 100 years. Gas fire is concentrated, but wood fire is enveloping. Wood has advantages because it has fight inside and infrared light, which gives it flavor, like mom used to make. Founded in 1909, the family factory is now in the hands of the third generation. But it was an emotional struggle for the current owner, Chou Wenzhen, to take over the labor-intensive work. Since I agreed to take over the factory from my father, I had to do a good job. If I wanted to make more money and speed up the process, I could mechanize. But for three generations, we have kept going and won't give it to anyone else. We took it step by step. I told my husband we have been through the hardest times, so it will be plain sailing from here. The married couple share multiple tasks in the factory, bringing up three children in the process and pulling the business out of a slump. When he talks about learning how to make sesame oil in childhood, Chiu Wenzhen jokingly says his father beat his skills into him. This is the pipe my father smoked. When I see it, I think about how I was beaten by it. We two brothers, my older brother and I, learned how to cook sesame. I also learned how to mold it. I learned more, so I got beaten more. I was scared of getting hit, so I learned fast. To raise efficiency, Chiu Wenzhen mechanized the cooking, cooling and pressing steps. However, controlling the temperature and feeding the stove with the right amount of wood still takes an expert touch. He has a smoky taste. I'm testing it for flavor. And although the press is no longer operated by hand, Mr. Cho must make constant adjustments to squeeze out the best oil. This evenly distributes the pressure. Most people use a steel hoop, least thick and wide, and put it in the middle, which stops the oil coming out. So they have to do it again. These small ones leave bigger spaces, which make it easier for the oil to come out. Day after day, for years and years, Chou Wenzhen and his wife have worked together, side by side, making sesame oil. As well as a happy marriage, the couple gain a sense of job satisfaction. When customers say your oil is delicious, that's my proudest moment. So I always say, there are no prizes better than a rewarded conscience. When in Rome, do as the Romans do. Whatever family you marry into, you have to do what the family does. If a husband and wife work together and agree with each other, they can turn dirt into gold. Knowing how hard it is to make sesame seed oil the traditional way, Chou Wenzhen and his wife do not hold out any hopes that their three sons will carry on the business. But the couple keep going out of responsibility to their ancestors and their loyal customers. Whatever we sell, we do it with a clean conscience. If everyone likes it, that's unimaginable support. To end today's show at Central Taiwan Tima's monthly free clinic in Miaoli's Zhuolan and Pinling, volunteer reporters from Taichung City never fail to cover the event. The team includes fruit farmers, retired teachers and civil servants. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for watching Daya Headlines. Goodbye. Thank you.